was a kid, I, um, somebody, I've got, got a feeling it must be my parents, bought me a video of Le Mans 1993. Right. When the Peugeot's, um, when the Peugeot won. Yeah. And, um, I remember just watching it so much, and I just thought that is, that is just, uh, an awesome race. And, um, then when I got into racing, sort of, I guess I was realistic that, you know, there's not many people going to go to be the next, uh, Schumacher or... Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, endurance racing was always the, the one that was interesting, so, um, yeah. that's, I started at Radicals, and then, um, ended up various things, V to V and various other things, and, but always with the goal to do this. Yeah. And, um, I had, um, I had an opportunity in 2004 to race the TBR. Yeah. I actually did the test day, which was quite an experience because I went there having only ever done, I think it was, a, I think I did about 15, 15, 20 laps of the brand Zindi circuit in a GT car, and then went to the test day. So when I pitched up, that was the only experience I'd had in a GT car. Yeah. Um, and I'd have been, uh, I'd been 20, 20, 20 at that. Uh, no, sorry, 22. Yeah. Um, and um, so that was a fairly eye-opening experience. And we just, we could have done the race, but at the time I was doing British GT in the TPR, and they couldn't make that finish a one-hour race. And um, it was, you know, quite a bit of money to put into it. And we just thought, you know, we could do it, not even get in the car in the race. So um, we said, well, well, we'll wait until another opportunity comes along. And our business, our business was, you know, smaller then. So it was, um, you know, you've got to cut your cloth accordingly, haven't you? And, yeah. Um, it, um, you know, luckily, we've, um, you know, the business has expanded in that time and it's allowed us to come and um, come and do this and this. You know, I stopped for a while because I was I worked on my own for a period. Right. And then, um, then I went back in 2000, end of 2008, really, I thought I actually need to get back into our family business because longer term, the earning potential was better there. And also, I just thought if, you know, to ensure nothing, anything happened to my father, yeah. you know, I would I, mean, to know. I, I, I wouldn't have known enough, so I needed to put the, the groundwork in. So, hence why my racing went a bit quiet for a bit, and then um, I sort of got going again. Um, did a bit in the speed series just to get a bit of mileage, and then yeah. um, then into obviously the ELMS in 2014. Yeah. Um, and then last year I was going to, uh, I wanted to do them on, but. Uh, Julian, who we were with at the time, had done the deal with David Chang, yeah. which um, um, meant that there needed to be two Chinese drivers in the car. Right. So um, I um, just wasn't in a position to commit when they could, and um, that was that. So um, this time, this year, it was funny, I thought, I thought again, I thought, well, I don't know how. Julian and I had decided I was just too big for the Morgan. Right. So I, I, I was having to take my hand off the steering wheel. Yeah, this wheel. is the Pegasus racing. Yeah, yeah. yeah car. So I was having to take my hand off the steering wheel to turn right in the car. It was that cramped for me. Right. Um, and Julian Canal. Uh, yeah. Julian Shell. Shell, yeah. sorry. So um, we both said, look, it's ridiculous trying to drive yeah. it. You, know, you can't really drive it like it, like it was. So, um, I don't know. Another friend been in touch with a, somebody that knew about the team and said about it. And they wanted a silver rated driver at the time. And then Julian knew um, uh, Vincent. Yeah. So he said, Look, I'll, I'll, um, I'll just have a chat and see what the score is. If, you know, if you're serious about doing something, so I said, Yeah. And then within that, you know, same day Vincent called me. And then, um, yeah. We, um, I think it was within, uh, well, within a week I was down at the factory and then um, uh, within sort of a couple of 
of days we'd agreed verbally the deal and then um, you know it took a few days to get the contract sorted that was that so it went from a very short period from thinking of doing nothing to you know, yeah. suddenly all, all systems go so um, it was um, you know it's, um, nice to be um, yeah. Yeah, doing something for a full year again and you obviously you got some successful running down at Paul Ricard yeah yeah, the really, um, yeah, the team, you know, all of, the, the team has got sort of good experience in it, but the, yeah. car, the car had never run before the prologue, um, you know, nobody worked together before the prologue, so it always takes a while for things just to gel, and, um, you know, just people to know how to work together, and um, yeah. it was, um, to be fair to the team, it you know, it went really well. It was the car was reliable, which you know, when you put a new car on the track, you've always got the potential yeah. that you know something's going to stop it. But um, it ran for the two days faultlessly, and um, yeah, we all got you know mileage in the car. And um, you know, for me, it was it was a good test. I did a race run on the second morning. Yeah, um, and it was just getting quicker and quicker all the time. Which yeah. is, you know, and- on Rock have seem to have a tremendous facility for manufacturing a very solid machine. When you look at the yeah. number of P2s and now the P3 yeah. car, um, this team you've chosen the Judd engine to put in the back of it. Yeah. Any anything in that? Um, that decision was already made when I came on board. Right. Uh, but you're familiar with the Judd from the Pegasus? Uh, no, it was a miss up. Was it? Yeah. So. Um, it's um, yeah. it's quite a different engine. Yeah. Um, it's um, I think I, as I say, I wasn't a party to the decision, but I think there was a supply issue with the Nissan engine. I have heard the Greaves yeah. had issue with getting more so, Nissan engines. So um, I think whether that that may have played a part in the decision, I'm not entirely sure. But to be um, to be fair, the Judd engine is. It's a race running engine it won with um, yeah. uh, Morand. Yep. Um, and race performance, I think, had good yeah. runs and, with it as well. It's, um, it's, um, it's a. Um, Sorry, it's a. Right. Yeah, no, it's. Um, it's, um, you know, it's a different engine, but it, it, it's very comparable. It's You've got to rev it a lot harder. It's When I first went out of the pits at Paul Rickard, I was sort of changing gear like I would in the Nissan. Yeah. realised the lights on the dash weren't even like lit up so you know it shows you know how much harder it you know and you can hear it on the outside the engine yeah. screams a lot more than the Nissan um, and you know it makes its power there yeah um, the Nissan engine is more talky but you know I think to be honest there's probably not a lot to tell between the two engines yeah so and you're on Dunlop rubber rubber yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, moving from the conversation about Paul Ricard and how it felt there, yeah. have you had a run out this morning in the yeah. first session? Yeah. How, how was it in the wet? Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> they, um, it's, um, you know, throughout my driving, I, you know, the rain's never worried me. And I've always, you know, I've gone okay in the wet. Um, but weirdly, because of circumstance, um, oh, I'm trying to think the last time I drove in the rain it was probably like 2009 it was you know quite a long time ago now. Yeah. Um, so it takes a while to get your mind back back into it but it, um, your car felt the car felt good there's a few bits we're going to try this afternoon um, but you know it, for me I, I um, the only time I drive is when I when I drive at the race meetings so yeah. you know I've um, nowadays, I'm what would be classed as a gentleman driver because I have a, have a job. Um, but this gives you the magic of the bronze ranking, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, so, it, um, it's um, you know for me, what I you know my um, challenge is to be. Um, you know, I, want, I want the team to um, be happy with the job that I'm doing. That's obviously the first thing, and I want to you know compare. Uh, amongst the best
as to the gentleman drivers. Yeah. And, you know, I also, you know, the reason I'm in, you could go and find any, any, not an easy championship, but you could go and find one where you could do very well, but you don't, you don't push yourself. Yeah. And I'd much rather be up against the best. Um, yeah. And, and push yourself to know that you've got to, where you've got to go better. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, that's, um, you know, it's always a challenge because, you know, these guys, they drive regularly, you know, through the week. So they, they, um, they get in and they, they are, they're fully lit. Yeah. Whereas for me, obviously, if you don't drive from one month to another, it just takes a while just to, to adjust. Yeah. Um, and now I think with uh, this team of things like data and video, you know, I can, for me, I can, I, the way I would tend to work is I get to a level and then think, okay, I'm here. And then I can look at the data from the video and say, okay, I just need to do this and this, and then I can find more time. So I think that's going to be the thing this, this year that's... Um, and and in, you had a debrief session just before we met. Yeah. Um, if you can tell me. Yeah. Um, is that all about the car, or do you actually compare your driver data and just identify areas of the track? The debrief is um, just about the car, really. Okay. So it's things like, um, I would say trivial bits, you know, mechanicals or um, driver <coughs> positions or anything you know, that is just how the car runs, basically. Right. So if there's any problems there that need to be looked at for the next session, um, and then you get into things like the balance and the aero and various bits that you go through to say where we think, yeah. where we, think we can improve. Um, and then you start to formulate a plan for the next session in terms of what we'll do and who will drive when and things okay. like that. So um, the, the driver... We tend to do more through the data. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that can be... Today is a bit more different because the, the weather changes. Yeah. You, know, you, you, um, uh, you, you know, trying to do direct comparisons all the time. You know, sometimes if you've got a drying or a yeah. you know, wet track, whatever, it, it can be... I think the first session should be fine, but, um, you know, maybe it's after. If it begins to dry, I don't know what, what will happen, but then it becomes hard to make the direct comparison. But um, yeah, normally you just look at the data when you come out of the car. You know, sometimes you may get out of the car in the session and go back in later. Yeah. And so you have a quick look to understand where you where you can gain time. So you'll have um, um, you'll have graphs. Basically, you have like a speed traces, and yeah. then you can see steering angles and throttle and brake inputs. So you can start to piece together uh, okay. a picture along with video to understand what physically you're doing in the car, which yeah. is making a difference to it going quicker. Right. So. And just back to the session, in terms of, you know, Dunlop rubber in the wet, yeah. all felt? Yeah, it felt um, fine, I mean, at the moment. Um, yeah, my times are okay, but you know, it's still time to find in me and yeah. the, the car. Um, and um, I drove the, the Michelin tyre last year, mm. but I didn't drive it in the wet. Yeah. So um, sadly, it's I can't you know give a comparison because yeah. uh, it was just weird that it, it was wet so last year but Leo ran in the wet so it just the way the session fell so yeah um, so yeah I've, I've never run the mission but it's up to, yeah. to get a comparison so much to talk about isn't it yeah. you, you're in a over 40 cars on the grid only nine of which I think are GT cars yeah so we've got over 30 um, prototypes out there yeah. I think in that first session I haven't seen a drive breakdown but uh, 22 was in 10th yeah um, and there's some quite nippy P3s sort of edging up behind yeah, you. Yeah. How how much of an issue? Where? Sorry, not. I'm building to a question. Yeah, believe me. Yeah. Um, where does a P3 make its lap compared to a P2? Is there a, a view yet? 
I wasn't really around. I, I went by some P3 cars in the session, but not um, any that were doing a sort of similar time to be able to get the right, right. comparison. Um, I think the P3, um, it really depends on the um, on the um, setup, I guess, they're running. But mm. they, I mean, normally for a, a, the P2, P3 difference would be on the brakes. Yeah. Um, I guess an element of the sort of high speed area. Because you've um, got a, a compromise that P2 has got more power. Than a yeah. P3, yeah. but P3 has got a lower frontal area. Yeah. Therefore, I suppose terminal velocity are higher, um, but they are probably quicker getting there or yeah. getting to there. So. Yeah, I, I think. Um, I think yeah, you've probably got it about right yeah. there. It, I've not seen the speed traces here because sometimes they can be very. You know, they can be very close. I mean, we've had it times where a GTE is, you know, is, is right in there as well. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it um, I think it really comes down to, yeah, probably the higher speed corners and the, the brakes. Yeah. Um, which, of course, an element that you lose a bit in the wet. In so, the wet session, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, I think it'll be interesting. There's obviously a, a fair disparity. I say a fair disparity. There's um, it will be interesting to see how it levels out going in through the next session to see where the yeah. P2s rank yeah. against the P3s. Oh. I mean, theoretically, I think the, P, the P2s will be ahead of the P3. But, yeah. Um, well, if they had, I think if they had seaweed hanging up at Silverstone. I understand it's drying throughout the rest of the weekend. Right, yeah. So um, hopefully we'll get to see a nice dry yeah, session yeah. and um, that'll be the, the proof of things. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, in, in the dry year, the, the P2 car will be, yeah. will be quicker. But it's, I think certainly, I think, I think what's interesting about P3 is they've definitely come on in the last year. The, the you know, the, obviously the Janetta started that phase last yeah. year and was um, you know those guys did a great job to get up out in a short time spell and then you know the, the Ginetta is um, you know P3 doesn't seem to be their focus but certainly the Liche seems to have you know they, I think P3 in general they seem to have unlocked some speed yeah um, when you compare where they were in the tests um, last year, yeah, and then look where they were this year. Yeah, you know they were. I can't remember the times exactly, but I would say they were. They were probably four, four, five seconds quicker. I would think something like that. It was a big. It yeah. seemed to be a big chunk. I mean, I think you've got is it V to V you're running with Simpson Motorsport. I did. I did. Uh, I did one race at Barcelona. Barcelona, right. Um, and that was mainly because last year we just had some bad, um, bad luck, um, <laughs> shall we say. And um, I didn't get a lot of driving last year. And, um, right. I, I just wanted, I committed to that drive before I'd actually done the deal for this. Right. But I just wanted to be in a position that if um, something came up, I wasn't going to the test and not trip for yeah. quite some time, both just getting your mind into driving again and uh, just physically it helps yeah all the routines happen, yeah. the processes yeah. around it and so on yeah. yeah super well we uh, at Sports Car Global will be watching and certainly our readership will be hopefully reading yeah and um, we'll give SO24 is it SO24 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 yeah. we will give them um, a, a, a good mention yeah thank you um, is Le Mans in the Calendar yeah, for you? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. No, I, yeah. That was, um, it, it was all part of the, yeah, yeah. part of the, um, bit that made the decision. It was, um, um, yeah, for me it's the race hold. I, I didn't want to get old and, um, end up, you know, 
just sat in, sat in the rocking chair thinking, well, I could have done it, but I just didn't, <laughs> I just didn't get off my ass and do it. And, I'm 50 uh, this year. Yeah. I know what getting old is. I haven't got a rocking yeah. chair yet, though, but yeah, yeah I it, wish. I just, <laughs> I think that, you know, I didn't want to be with my grandkids if I'm lucky to get some, some time and think, well, you know, say, yeah. well, I wish I could have done it. Um, before I, you know, before I stop racing, so, um, well, that's, that's, that's why that's, I like to write stories like yeah, this, I'm yeah, afraid, yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, um, yeah, no, it was, I only wanted to do it with a team that, you know, could have had an entry, and yeah. physically could have a commitment that that's what you're going to go and do, so, um, nothing better than picking a French team, yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think it'll be quite, um, I mean, I, I went to the one in 2004 for, um, with when I had the chance, yeah. um, but I haven't been since, and I think I would imagine as a French team and with the connections locally, I should think it's going to be um, a fairly um, busy, um, busy week. I should think. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, it well, be fun. we'll see you down at La Sarthe. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah. 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 Cheers. Yeah.